At Home in the Coral Reef by Katie Music, illustrated by Catherine Brown Wing. Down, down in the tropical clear blue sea lives a beautiful coral reef. The coral reef is a wonderful home for hundreds of kinds of fish and thousands of other kinds of creatures. The reef itself is made of zillions of tiny animals called coral polyps. Each tiny coral polyp catches food with its little arms called tentacles. The polyps share their food and live so close together that their skeletons are connected. Some kinds of coral polyps make soft skeletons that gently sway back and forth in the water. These polyps have eight tentacles. Other coral, coral polyps make skeletons that are, that are as hard as rock. Their hard skeletons form the coral reef. A hard coral polyp has 12 or 24 or 48 or more tentacles. Together, over 50 kinds of hard coral form this reef in the Caribbean Sea. What are those pink things? Coral eggs. Once a year, coral polyps have babies. Eggs and sperm pop out of the polyps and float up and up to the top of the blue sea. There, each fertilized egg becomes a baby coral called a planula. Now it is ready to search for a new home. The planula is completely covered with little hairs. It swims by waving them through the water, but it cannot swim very fast. Watch out for those hungry wrasses. Just in time, a big wave carries the planula away to the crest or top of the coral reef. Here the water is very shallow. Because it is so shallow, the waves break and crash into the reef. Splash! Crash! The breaking waves make the water very rough. It's so rough that only a few animals can live here. A fireworm holds on tight. A school of blue tangs darts in and out, hunting for food. Crash! Splash! Will this be the home for the planula? No, it's too rough. The planula is swept along, riding a wave over the crest to the lagoon. The water in the lagoon is calm. Although the lagoon seems peaceful, it is really a busy place from top to bottom. At the top, a pelican gulp gulps a pouchful of fish. At the bottom, a stingray slurps up shrimp. Many animals looking for food in the lagoon are hard to see. An emerald clingfish hides on a blade of turtle grass. Clams and crabs hide in the sand. Such a busy place, day and night, in the lagoon. Flash, glow, blink. What could all those lights be? They twinkle like stars in the sky, but they are all underwater. These lights are made by animals. Animals almost too small to see are twinkling. Brittle stars flash to scare away lobsters and crabs. Worms glow to show the other worms where they are. Flashlight fish attract their food by blinking. Can the planula live here? No, it is too sandy. The planula needs a rocky place. It floats along to the red mango grove trees near the shore of the lagoon. Red mangroves can grow in salty water. Their roots grow out and down, right into the ocean. Sponges and seaweeds grow on the roots. Millions of baby fish and baby shrimp start life in the water around mangrove roots. There's lots of food for them there. Will this be a home for the planula too? No, the water here is too shady for the planula. It turns away and swims to the shallow water near the beach of the lagoon. The sunshine heats the sandy beach. The sand was made by the ocean waves. Over thousands of years, the waves have pounded the skeletons of reef animals and plants into smaller and smaller bits. Eventually, the bits formed so many grains of sand that they covered the bottom of the lagoon and washed up on shore to make a beach. Will this be the home for the planula? No, it is too shallow and too hot here. The planula catches the current to deeper water. Oh no, the water is dirty. The water is so dirty the coral is dying. The dirt smothers the coral polyps and blocks the sunlight they need. Chemicals washed down the river from factories and farms poison the coral. In the dirty water, harmful bacteria grow over the coral and kill it. Careless divers hurt the coral, too. 
They step on it and break it with their boat anchors. Without living coral, the fish and other animals will leave. The planula cannot live here either. Luckily, a current carries it out of the lagoon, over the top of the reef, and down the other side of the reef, deeper and deeper and deeper, to a healthy part of the reef. At last, a safe spot for the planula to settle down. The spot is hard and rocky. It is sunny, but not too hot. Gentle currents bring clean water and plenty of food. It will be a perfect home. The planula begins to change. First, it sticks itself to a safe spot. Then, around its mouth, it grows 12 little tentacles. Now, it is a polyp. It looks like a flower, but is really an animal. Under its soft body, the polyp starts to grow a hard, white skeleton. In a few weeks, it makes another tiny polyp, exactly like itself. The polyps are connected to each other. Together, the two polyps have 24 tentacles for catching food. The planula is growing up to be a staghorn coral. More polyps grow, and more and more. Here comes a reef butterfly fish. It eats coral. The coral polyps warn each other of the danger. Quick as a wink, they hug their tentacles in. They hide their soft bodies down inside their hard, white skeleton. When the danger is past, the coral polyps slowly come out and open up their tentacles again. Many creatures in the reef are partners that help each other hide or find food. A crab hides in the coral to escape from a hungry octopus. A shrimp lives safely inside a vase sponge. At a cleaning station, gobies eat what they clean from the teeth of a big grouper. The grouper holds its mouth wide open for the gobies. Away from the station, the grouper would eat gobies. Even the tiny polyps have partners. The polyps get special food from little golden plants living just inside their skin. In return, the plants get a home. This partnership helps the coral grow big enough to form reefs. Down, down, down in the tropical clear blue sea, this coral reef is alive and well. The place where it lives is clean. Zillions of coral animals have been adding their skeletons to the reef for over 8,000 years. It takes thousands of years for a reef to grow, but only a few years for one to be destroyed. This reef and other coral reefs all around the world are in danger because the oceans are becoming dirty. Coral reefs need our help. What can we do to help a little baby planula grow up to become part of a big coral reef? The first step is to discover how what we do on land affects life in the sea. All living creatures, including corals and people, need clean water. We all use water on our farms, in our suburbs, and in our cities. We throw many things into it that make it dirty. This dirty water flows into rivers, lakes, and underground streams, and eventually winds up in the sea. There, it hurts the coral reef and all the creatures that make it their home. But we can make a difference. We can make our rivers and lakes and oceans clean again. We can learn about life on the coral reef and share what we learn. We can help people everywhere to care about the amazing reefs and the tiny coral animals that build them. At Home with Caddy and Catherine Katie Music is a marine biologist who specializes in octocorals, commonly known as sea fans. She has dived on coral reefs all over the world, including Fuji, Japan, Australia, and throughout the Caribbean. Katie wrote At Home in the Coral Reef to share both her love of the sea and her concern for its rapidly declining health. She hopes that once people realize how beautiful, fragile, and important corals are, they will change their behavior to help preserve coral reefs. Katie lives near the ocean in Isabella, Puerto Rico. <laughs>